Warframe has always been a bit of an anomaly to me, something that's just existed outside of my peripheral vision. I've had friends that love it. I have friends that play it. I've only ever heard good things about the game, but beyond that, for some odd reason, I've just never really given the game a shot. And let's be honest, it's a free-to-play first-person shooter MMO. Any combination of those words in any order doesn't really fill people with a whole lot of faith nowadays. But with that said, it has tens of millions of players that are playing it. It has been updated for over a decade, and it's mostly positive on Steam, which tells me that there's far more than meets the eye. Thank you, Optimus. But I finally gave the game a shot. I put about 20 hours into the game, and oh boy, not what I expected. So today what I want to do is I want to give you guys my perspective on my first 20 hours of playing Warframe, but even more so, I want to tell you guys what it felt like, what it looked like, and most importantly, what it cost. Warframe has always had a presence as a live service game. Many players love it due to its constant updates that have been spanning over a decade, community-driven events, and what many players view as a fair monetization model that respects player investment, thus encouraging a dedicated and growing fan base. Warframe has a lot of elements of games that I love. It has the RPG looter shooter elements of The Division, Borderlands, or Destiny, the massive multiplayer appeal of games like Final Fantasy XIV or World of Warcraft, and an art style that reminds me of older sci-fi movies and television. Please tell me that I'm not the only one who thought of the Giver when they first saw Excalibur. I am the Giver. So after years of ignoring the game and pleas from my friends begging me to just try the game, I decided to log in for the first time. And man, this is not what I was expecting. For a decade-old game, Warframe does not show its age. The art style is unique, the colors pop, and everything has this futuristic glean that holds the eye's attention. Playing my first mission made me feel like I was learning how to walk for the first time. Not that I really remember that, but the playing felt stuttered. I was walking too slow, I was running too fast, I overshot my target, I was running into walls. I was immediately reminded of the first time that my dad was trying to teach me how to drive stick shift, and he just kept laughing the entire time while I was panicking and struggling. I will say that while I was initially overwhelmed with the controls of Warframe, I recognized very quickly that precision in movement seemed to be core to the game's overall experience. And eventually I just started to ignore my first quest, the tutorial mission, and just started to practice my parkour skills eventually getting a little bit more comfortable before I moved on. Now, speaking about being overwhelmed, it took me a while, and honestly, it's still taking me a while to really understand and wrap my head around all of the skills and abilities that you have in a Warframe. Warframes have powers like standard MMOs. I chose Volt because lightning and speed are always cool, and he starts with a lightning shock ability, a chain lightning, a movement and attack speed increase, an AoE shock that can stun enemies. All these are bound to keys one through four. Movement keys are where they normally are, but what I found the most difficult was juggling between movement, melee, gunplay, and the abilities because they all feel like they're core to the game. You have a lot of options when it comes to taking down enemies. It's a bit overwhelming at first. Most games usually just stick to one category. Maybe the melee takes the front seat or the gunplay takes the front seat. However, in Warframe, everything has a purpose and a time of use to use it. Now, it's not that I would know anything about when that best time would use it would be because at this level of the game, it is absurdly easy, to the point where it started to grade on me within my first couple of missions, and it still is to a point. Initially, I thought this was just because I was playing the tutorial. However, the longer I played, the more I realized that this wasn't the case, as even 20 hours into the game, I'm still cutting through it like a hot knife through butter. I play a lot of RPGs. I'm used to games slowly ramping up the difficulty, or at least putting me on equal grounds with the enemy at the start. That's not the case in Warframe. Now, you probably think that that's a bad thing, and in part it is. There was one boss fight that I went and did that apparently had some higher level players that had matchmaked me with, and when they came in, they just sneezed on the boss and it died within a few seconds. That kind of experience is pretty jarring, it doesn't make you really look forward to things or really take the game all that seriously. But, at the same time, there are hidden benefits to being an invincible space ninja that nothing really seems like a danger to you, and that's the fact that you're taking more time to drink in the rest of the game like a fine wine rather than struggling or trying to overcome some level of difficulty and get better at the game's controls. And that kind of makes for a pretty good experience. I would rather the game be a little bit more difficult than it is. We'll talk about that a little bit further into the video. But with that said, 
there's a lot of nuance to this game, a lot of hidden systems and things like that. And the game doesn't give you a whole lot of context, but because the game isn't all that challenging at the start, well, you have the time to really look into all of those other things. It's giving you that extra time because, well, the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay kind of goes by in a flash. Now, I've had conversations with some of my friends. They've told me the difficulty ramps up, it changes, don't worry. I'm just going to have to believe them at this point. But with that said, let's talk about that wine. After my first couple hours, I continued to play the game completing quests on Earth, slowly but surely becoming a little bit more familiar with the game's controls and systems as they were introduced to me. And then I was hit with my first surprise, Cetus, a fully explorable open world area with quests, bounties, and its own fully fleshed out single player storyline. Again, I found myself impressed by how the game's fidelity continued to hold up and even more so how fully realized these zones were. Cetus and Earth have their own identity. And little did I know that this would become a common theme that would keep my interest stapled to the game. Many of my assumptions about what Warframe were, at this point, were completely shattered. Characters were well voice acted. Everything in the game is voice acted. The game isn't locked to short instance missions. Load screens are short. I haven't had any advertisements that have been shoved in my face ever since I started the game. Stories were interesting, and everything I did in the game felt like it had purpose. I feel like every game at some moment has that thing that happens. That thing that lets you know that you're on to something. You know that moment that I'm talking about. It's the one that hooks you and makes you feel like if you stick around long enough, you're going to be surprised and delighted in some way. For me, that was the moment that I arrived on Fortuna. Captivated by the environment, the neon lights, the colors, and the people, I realized that there was more to this game than I first imagined. As I said before, when a game has great music, it's almost always a sign of care and reverence from the creators of the game. Anything by FromSoft, Skyrim, Mass Effect, and the list goes on. All the most legendary games have a legendary soundtrack, and so far, this game's music has only continued to impress. Personality isn't something that I expected to find in a free-to-play game. However, Warframe is filled with it. Whether it's the annoying ship navigator, the visual diversity of every world that you go to, the voice acting, the quests, or the people, my expectations were shattered at every single turn, and I barely even scratched the surface on a game that has hundreds if not thousands of hours to offer, over 10 years of constant support, and an active player base that rivals many of today's popular live service games. And I also want to mention that from a narrative perspective, the game did continue to exceed my expectations. I wasn't expecting a game like this to have as much personality as it does, even more so how well they blend together a lot of different elements to make sure that the story is delivered to you in a way that it's not us just walking through a story, it's a story going through you, if that makes any sense. And I think in a lot of times, we often will take for granted how important it is to have a medley of different things in a game. We can talk about how we want the gameplay to be great, and if the gameplay is great, then we like the game, but more times than not, our favorite games, at least my favorite games that I've ever played, it's not just one key aspect is the only reason I like it. It's the whole package, and in a lot of cases, to be able to really drive a game home, it does have to be the total package, the music, the environment, the atmosphere, the gameplay. All of these things have to come together to be able to deliver an experience that makes it memorable for us. And for me, Fortuna was definitely one of those moments. The characters, the storylines that were there, the music when you first land there was absolutely absurd. And yeah, I love that kind of stuff. Again, I really want to convey just how surprised I am that these kind of things exist in a game that I paid nothing for. As I continued to play the game, I realized that the level of difficulty still hadn't changed. Normally, I would have bounced off of a game that had a bar of difficulty that is as low as it is in Warframe. 
I don't need a game to be difficult, but I do expect to be challenged. And I can imagine that there's a lot of players that are out there that probably stop playing the game and put it down specifically for that reason. Now, with that said, the game has grown on me relatively quickly, especially when it comes to well, how the game feels to play. It's a very fast game. The content is bite-sized, but with the missions that you play, you can stay in them as long as you want to. If party members want to drop out, they can leave anytime they want without pulling you with them. And oftentimes, I would find myself just falling into this rhythm with the combat. Just because it's just so visually and mentally immersive, flying around the map at breakneck speeds, cleaving enemies in half, leveling up weapons, and collecting loot. Now, speaking of the loot, I found this relatively perplexing because there's a lot of it, and oftentimes the game doesn't really provide you with a lot of context on what these items are used for, or what items are special, and what items are not. Which, I'll be honest, I found that a little bit jarring because it takes away the excitement of finding things in the world. Oftentimes, materials or mods are the things that drop, and materials are something that you use in your foundry, something that you're going to be using a lot of. Crafting is a very big part of this game. And then mods, which are the game's way of build crafting. Mods can be placed on warframes, melee weapons, sidearms, main firearms, and even pets, granting you different buffs to your damage, attack speed, elemental damage, survivability, increased ability potency, and a slew of other things allowing you to be able to upgrade them and power them up even further and tailor your build to suit whatever kind of content that you're trying to tackle or whatever your playstyle is. It's obvious at first glance that there is a lot of flexibility when it comes to the mod system in Warframe. Every single Warframe has their own use, has their own type of mods that they want to use or are going to be best used on those mods. And you combine that with the fact that you have weapons that also have a variety of different mods to use. You can use them with your pets and things like that. It makes my inner Diablo fan begin to salivate. Now again, I don't really want to harp on this too much. However, if anyone from Digital Extremes ever finds this video, please, for the love of God, just touch up the difficulty just slightly. The build crafting potential in this game is infinite. It's crazy the amount of different things that you can do. However, as a new player, I can't see the impact of my build crafting because even without mods 20 hours into the game, I can clear the vast majority of content with little to no effort. If you combine this with how quickly you can smash through quests and missions, you're left feeling like none of the choices that you make in the world or in the game really matter that much. It doesn't matter what weapon you're using, what frame you're using, what mods you're using, or whatever, and that just doesn't feel good. If it wasn't for how wonderful the game feels to play and how wonderful the world of the game is, I would have probably stopped playing the game after hour 10 or maybe even earlier. Warframe within the first 20 hours looks like a game with infinite possibilities. Individual Warframes play to their own personalized class fantasy. They have their own identity. However, when everything else is so weak, it often feels like I'm just walking over the game rather than walking through it. Now, at this point, I've only ever had the opportunity to play with one single frame, but I've seen other friends play with different frames. I've viewed some of the frames in the store and also in the foundry. And one of the things that I've grown to really appreciate is that looking at all the skills and the builds for these different Warframes that are out there, the game does a really good job of fulfilling class fantasies within that specific Warframe and what it does. So just using Vault as an example, the starting frame that I have, it's an electric speed type. So it has abilities that increase its attack speed. It uses electricity. The faster it moves, the more it moves, the more damage it can do once it stops moving or once it starts attacking. It has abilities to be able to get itself out of harm's way by unleashing a shock wave that stops everybody around them so they can keep moving. It has a shield that they can put up in front of them or they can drop on the ground, which again allows them to keep moving. Everything makes sense in the context of how the character is supposed to play, and it looks to be the same with just about every single other frame that's out there. And I really appreciate that because being able to deliver on a class fantasy is really important when you want people to really enjoy how each frame plays and also give people a reason to chase other frames to play in the game. Now, I wish that I had the opportunity to play as more than one frame. Sadly, I haven't, and that's because of some other systems in the game that have made me actually ask out loud whether or not they want me to actually play their game. I would like to classify... Warframe as a SMMO, a systems MMO, where you're leveraging these different various systems to be able to unlock other content in the game. There's a lot of different systems in the game that are interconnected to one another that unlock other content in the game, and that's just how you progress through it. At this point during my play, I had all of my current weapons and my frame and my pet all max level, and I ran into my first roadblock, and I felt as though I wasn't progressing, and in fact, I was not progressing. 
In this game, you gain mastery rank. Mastery rank is something you get by leveling up other things to their max level. You get a certain amount of mastery rank experience for each item or each weapon or frame that gets maxed out. So if you aren't leveling anything, then you aren't progressing through the master rank system. And the master rank system gives you access to different weapons, items, and other content that's in the game. So at this point, I decided it was time that I need to look into getting a new frame or new weapons. And this isn't something that the game really makes readily apparent. You have to go looking for it. Now, it's possible that there's a quest at some point in the game that I maybe missed or maybe haven't gotten to yet that tells you how to get a new frame or explains to you these kind of systems. However, there is, I haven't gotten to it yet. After looking at a short tutorial in the game, I checked the market console in my ship where you could just outright buy frames and weapons with platinum, which is the game's premium currency. However, each tab also shows blueprints for the frame while explaining exactly how to get that frame in game without ever having to pay anything for it. You can go do a quest or fight a boss or an event or maybe go do some dailies or bounties and you'll be able to get more details there. I want to point out that I have a lot of respect for Digital Extremes because they tell players how to acquire items for free in the same menu where you can buy it. Many other games wouldn't try to be this transparent and they would hope that their misdirection would make players purchase more things rather than try to earn them on their own. After browsing the market, I noticed that one of the frames had a drop chance from a boss that I had fought earlier in my playthrough. I spent roughly 15 minutes running through the fight a few times over. This is relatively quick because higher level players were just killing it instantly every time I got matchmaked with them, and I got the blueprints that I needed. I noticed that each part of the blueprints required me to go get different materials. Each material slot actually told me where I could go get that specific material, and I ran around doing those missions on those planets. I asked friends to take me to planets that I didn't have access to, and I collected everything I needed to build my second Warframe. Crafting is a key mechanic in Warframe, something that I'm glad to have learned early on, something that, to be honest with you, the game doesn't really do a very good job of explaining at first. However, you just get to go look for the things that you want, and it harkens back to older RPGs where everything is just attainable by playing the game. As I searched for materials to build Rhino, I ended up finding other materials that I could use in the future. I discovered that the game has fishing, I learned about reputation, and I found weapon blueprints and even a whole entire other frames blueprints. The more I chased, the more I found, and it's a philosophy that modern games have gotten away from, and I'm happy to see that it's alive and well in Warframe. When I went into Warframe, I was fully expecting it to be like any other free-to-play MMO run-of-the-mill game that's out on the market today where there are things that are available for free, but the good stuff, <laughs> boy, you're going to have to pay for that. That's not the case. At least over 20 hours in, that hasn't been the case. Anything that you want in the game, you just go get it. Simple as that. The game tells you where to go find all of these things, including the materials. It's very intuitive. It's very easy to understand. You can see that crafting is a big part of the game, and it's really easy to approach once you get even just the slightest grasp on it. And while I was farming for all the things that I needed to make Rhino, I ended up finding the blueprints to be able to make Gara and another weapon as well and then at the exact same time I found stuff to be able to make other frames and other materials and all kinds of different stuff and it just makes that experience that much more rewarding when I go out to grind when I go out to farm I'm being rewarded for things in the future or for the things that I'm trying to chase right in that moment and again the game makes all that information readily available once you actually start going and looking for it and I think that's what probably the loop of this game is. You push your master rank to be able to get access to you know, more content in the game. Once you get to that content, you find something that you want to chase. You chase for it while getting things for other stuff, and the loop just kind of continues. It's not the most imaginative thing, but it works, and it feels good. It's engaging, and it's rewarding, and it's something that I genuinely appreciate, and I'm really happy to see in a game like this because it's just something that we haven't seen, well, even in fully priced titles lately. So... With that said, everything in the game is just within arm's reach. However, you have to be patient to be able to get it. Now, when I say that you have to be patient, I mean you have to have a ton of patience and time. After collecting everything that I needed to craft Rhino, I went to my ship and opened up my foundry, all excited to get my next Warframe. It was then that I noticed that each piece to build the frame took 12 hours to make. Once all of those parts are built, then you need to put all those parts together, which takes an additional 72 hours. Some weapons even take 12 to 24 hours to craft. And by the way, the time gating doesn't stop there. Master rank, that account level that I talked about earlier that you progress and it gives you access to more items from shops, the ability to craft some items. Hell, even some areas of the game are locked behind that 
Yes, even that is time gated. That means say that you have a weapon that you want to make, like I have Fulman as an example. I have to wait the entire cooldown between seven and level eight. Then I have to wait 24 hours for the cook timer. And yes, if you're wondering, you can speed up the crafting timer using Platinum, the game's in-game premium currency. One thing that I hate more than anything is time gates. Systems like these make me ask out loud whether or not the developer wants me to play their game. When you're this early into the game as I am, you're just looking to unlock new things, we'll get access to more things, you want to learn more, you want to level things up. I can't explain to you just how frustrating it is to have my progress and enjoyment halted by imposed arbitrary restrictions from the developer that are specifically there just for monetization purposes. I can't tell you how frustrating it is because I look at the rest of the game's monetization and it just really doesn't make sense in the context of everything else. Like here's this obvious money sink, this dirty practice, yet everything else looks so damn good. Now Warframe's monetization is an anomaly in and of itself. They have massive positives, like the ability to just earn things by playing. After seeing how simple it is to actually earn things in the game, I can't imagine why somebody would ever even want to spend real money in the first place. Even the game's Battle Pass, the Night Wave, doesn't have a monetizable option. Quests that you don't complete, rewards that you don't get, just get carried over and recycled into the passes once they renew. Yet, at the same time, living alongside these great examples of proper monetization, they have time gating and even worse, Manipulative premium currency packages. Warframes and items that are sold for premium currency are just above the amount of the currency that they sell. Frames will cost 375. Not all frames cost the same price, by the way, but some frames will cost 375 platinum when the bundles that you can buy are 1999 for 370, not 375, and the next up package being 49.99 for a thousand platinum. It's likely to make your skin crawl. Now, instead of being instantly outraged, I took the time to just ask my friends and other players about why people aren't upset over things like this, because in other games, I would be raging about it. And I came to find out that most people don't ever really buy frames. They just build them and then leverage the community to be able to make farming easier. This is one of the most unique aspects of Warframe, because the in-game trading is wide open. Players can trade prime Warframe's materials, in-game currency, whatever they want, and Digital Extremes allows it. They celebrate it more than anything else. Which makes sense that players would be using in-game trading because everything the game sells is so absurdly priced that if trading was locked, nobody would probably even be playing this game. It's almost as if Digital Extremes has priced the monetization in the game in a way that nobody would actually want to engage with it. It's a free-to-play game. After 20 hours of playing it, you start to think to yourself, yeah, I'm enjoying it. Maybe I'll throw them a little bit of money. I don't mind investing in it a little bit. Maybe increase my enjoyment just slightly, speed up my progress in some kind of way. And yeah, the minute that I went to start looking at some of the bundles, I was immediately turned away. I was like, no, I'm not buying any of this stuff. This is way outrageously priced. None of the things that they're selling are things that I even want. And then that's obviously when I started doing the research and I started talking to friends and I started looking into the player economy. And it all makes sense because with how outrageously priced some of the things are, the players just turn to trading amongst themselves and then the company actually celebrates that practice. It's a really odd pairing of things. And with that said, I might be completely off base by saying this, but if I had to take a wild guess, I think that the speed up process for the foundry of being able to pay platinum to be able to basically instantly get the items that you want. Well, that's probably a safety net for the monetization, and I'd imagine that's where a lot of the money does go at the end of the day. Players will buy the premium currency, platinum. They'll use it to buy materials that they want, to be able to craft the things that they want. They'll sell other items that they have for more platinum and then use that platinum to be able to speed up the crafting process for the things that they make. This is by far the weirdest monetization ecosystem that I've seen within a game, but it works. Warframe is a game of feeling and patience. At first glance, it's something that I would normally write off, but I've genuinely enjoyed playing the game and I plan to continue playing it. The game feels amazing to play, and over the years, that's become one of the most important factors when it comes to a game that I want to buy or the game that I want to invest a lot of time into. Once you've gotten into the rhythm, once you've gotten into the groove, time starts flying by as you're flipping, dodging, dashing, slashing, shooting, and learning some of the more finer nuances of the game. The music is absolutely fantastic. The design of the world, its characters, the frames, the weapons, the enemies, all of it is incredibly distinct and unique, and it's something that I really enjoy. I thought that this game would be generic, but it's far from generic, and it's no wonder that so many people have fallen in love with this game. 
Over 10 years of consistent content updates have filled the game with a ton of different Warframes to play, double the amount of weapons, unique quests, unique game modes, and entire solar system to explore, flying missions with their own upgradable gear, and the game even has a Souls-like, roguelike, where it even has its own fully fleshed out progression system, fully realized story, unique world customization materials, blueprints, and even more that feeds into the base game. I think that this is the first time that I've played a game that has this many unique in-game systems that make it feel like you're playing a game within a game. And from what I hear, there's even more to come. Playing Warframe is a lot like peeling an onion. There are multiple layers, and if you do it wrong, it's likely to make you cry. There's a lot of nuance, a lot of complex systems, a steep learning curve, and the game doesn't always give you all the context that you need. Warframe is a game that has very little hand-holding. But if you give it time, it may grow on you like it did with me. Over the years, I've fallen out of love when it comes to live service games. I used to eat, sleep, and drink them quite frequently, but for the most part, many of them just grinded on me a little bit too hard or their monetization was just too outside of my scope for me to really want to continue to play. However, Warframe is a game that's exceeded my expectations at just about every single given turn. There are plenty of things that I don't like about the game, but there are far more things that I really love about the game. And it's something that I plan on continuing to play. And I would like to continue to cover the game as well. So if you guys are interested in hearing what I think about the game after, say, 40 hours or 50 hours or whenever else I feel like making another video about the game, then let me know. Drop a comment on the video, like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Give me a holler and let me know that you guys want to see more content on this game, and I will continue to know, let you guys know what my thoughts are moving forward. With that said, it's been an absolute blast. I had a good time playing it. I had a really fun time actually making this video as well. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope you found some value in it. And yeah, that's it. Stay cool, stay righteous, stay safe. And most of all, I'll see you guys next time. Also. Follow me on Twitch. Peace. Family.